Do you get the feeling that Liverpool are as formidable as ever? Watch this this afternoon. Everybody says we're uh, at one headline, the Empire crumbles. Well, uh, the headline's tomorrow, hopefully, with the Empire strikes back. And a chance for us to check on the two teams for this uh, charity shield today. First of all, the Liverpool team, and it speaks for itself, no injuries. And indeed, when I asked the manager, Bob Paisley, for it yesterday, he laughingly said, well, it's the same as last year's charity shield team. Nothing seems to change much. And indeed, Bob will be hoping that Liverpool produce that same brilliant performance that beat Arsenal 3-1 in this fixture last season and straightway, of course, set them on course for the championship. As for West Ham, well, they come without striker Stuart Pearson, who injured a knee in one of the warm-up matches in Scotland. And so the two men up front are going to be David Cross and Jeff Pike. There was a doubt about central defender Alvin Martin, who had a back injury, but the good news for West Ham that he is fit to play. And the surprise is that there's no place in the back four for Frank Lampard. He is one of the substitutes. And I suppose if we're looking for the teams to turn on the style today, which we want above all, then maybe Trevor Brooking, who scored that winner here in May for West Ham, could do something about that. Supported unquestionably by Alan Devonshire in the midfield, who, with young Paul Allen, has just signed a long-term contract at Upton Park. And in midfield, Liverpool, for their part, have Terry McDermott, who scored two brilliant goals in this fixture last season, and Graham Souness, who will be as competitive as ever, and who, incidentally, starts this new season as a married man. He was married three weeks ago today, and so far, he tells me, he's spent only three days with his new bride. Well, that's a footballer's life for you. The referee today is John Hunting from Leicestershire. And at the start of the game, the two managers, beginning 90 edgy minutes, John Ryle on the left, Bob Paisley on the right. And it's Liverpool in that famous and formidable strip of all red who get us away, attacking the goal to our right. West Ham in the change strip of white. McDermott. Soonis. Liverpool have played four warm-up games. And they've been beaten twice on the continent. In Belgium and in West Germany. West Ham come to this game with six warm-up matches under their belts. Pike. Putting that battle with Phil Neal, cross finding Brooking and spraying it wide there as uh, soon as very quickly clatters into Brooking there. And John Hunting was right on the spot to award West Ham that free kick. Ray Kennedy with Liverpool's throw. It's with Hansen. Every West Ham player is back, but McDermott is right in there. And it could come for him just wide. West Ham in terrible disarray there. In fact, there was an infringement. Uh, there was a handball by McDermott. And it was certainly a narrow squeak, or it seemed to be, until that whistle went. Hansen taking it across the penalty area. The little chip in there. McDermott now will burst on the scene, and there must have been a handball there at that moment as he just squirts it wide of the post. And now Alvin Martin, himself uh, a boy from Bootle who used to support Liverpool. That's a youngster, the West Ham number five. Stewart, cross. Does it come for Kennedy? Now soon, it's good play here by Liverpool, sending Johnson on his way. A lot of pace for that, uh, David Johnson, but that time Stewart kept with him, but Johnson still got it in. Brush cutting it out, though, for West Ham. But a good-looking move down Liverpool's left there, and here's Soonis again. Curled in this time for Thompson. A lot of red shirts forward now for Liverpool. Look at the space there. It'll come for Souness, but Stewart clashed there with him and uh, just nicked it away. McDermott this time back for Jimmy Case. And no problems there for Phil Thompson, or for uh, Phil Parks. The long-range shooting of uh, Jimmy Case again. It's with Devonshire. Devonshire, 
Brookings gone forward in danger of being caught offside, but Holland won't be. Almost the first touch of the ball that Pat Holland's had. A little nick through there for Brookings onside. And Pike is in there. Can Pike turn it back? He tried to get it off for cross, and in the end it was Case who put it behind. But that was a good searching break there by West Ham. And uh, Brookings was right in the middle of it. And it's Pike here who not only keeps the ball in play, finds that little cross in there, but it didn't quite reach David Cross, and Case was able to put it over. Devonshire. Pike, back for Devonshire again. It'll be too far, I think, for Cross, yes. Hansen there. And now Sunis, leaving it for Kennedy. To Alan Kennedy. And now for David Johnson. His man nicely there. The final pass wasn't all that good, but it eventually came to case. Neil. <laughs> well, it's got to be the worst shot of the season so far. A throw to West Ham. Hansen. Kennedy. Johnson, Dalgleish would like to get there, but Billy Bonds had the heading ability to stop him. And now Alvin Martin. Finding Brooking. Oh, through the legs of Hansen, the West Ham fans enjoyed that. And Brooking with men outside him, but then running into trouble. Cross trying to resurrect that little situation, but uh, Brooking had opportunities there, but didn't take them. Which is unlike him. It's Pike. Hansen. Dalglish, Bonds going in hard from the back, but he must have connected with the ball. Kennedy, the long ball forward. Bonds again with this job of watching Kenny Dalglish. And played back nicely by Dalglish for Sunis. And charged off Paul Allen and behind for the corner to Liverpool. Bonds, who's looking after Kenny Dalglish, as you can see right there. And there he goes again, Dalglish, and the ball hits Billy Bonds. Pike, Brooking. And Pike's going to be well offside, and Brooking was aware of it, had to hold on to the ball as the Liverpool back four came forward quickly. Case has a nice ball releasing Phil Neal. Martin's come across there. Case. Thompson. Sunis. And David Cross getting that one, finding Jeff Pike. Kennedy. Played on for Dalglish. It's Bonds again. West Ham bench there. John Lyle obviously realising the problems that Dalglish could cause them, and he's... Oh, Billy Bonds, don't you let him turn anywhere near our box. And at the moment, Bonds is denying that brilliant Scottish international that. Kennedy with a shot. Oh, and a goal by McDermott. The ball was dropped by Parks. And Terry McDermott scores for Liverpool with 17 minutes gone. Phil Parks, I suppose, will blame himself. But McDermott snapping up the opportunity that was offered there for him. And Liverpool have something to cheer. And he hasn't. Well, the shot came in very quickly. It was Ray Kennedy just knocking it in there. And it was Alan Kennedy's shot that Parks couldn't quite hold. And just look what a gift it was for McDermott. And it's Hansen now on the ball for Liverpool as he finds Ray Kennedy. And now Sunis. Alan Kennedy, Johnson, and that goes for the corner. So as Liverpool push their big men forward, amongst them Alan Hansen and Ray Kennedy here. 
Corner taken by Dalgleish. Oh, and Souness was so close with that one. Really caught West Ham out. The corner was played that much wider by Kenny Dalgleish. And Souness caught them out, but was just off target. Martin. Damid Souness. Oh, and then gives it to him. Now a break on for Liverpool because Dalgleish is up and Johnson's on this side of the field as well, with West Ham having push men forward. Free kick, and how quickly he took it. The quick thinking there of Kenny Dalgleish, and it's got Kennedy on his way. And a goal kick. But a good example there of how Kenny Dalgleish took that free kick within, uh, I should think, half a second of the whistle having gone, and good refereeing by John Hunting, allowing that to be done that way. Alan Kennedy. Oh, Case. Devonshire misjudged that one. Alan Kennedy. And that time Parks is down quickly. That's a couple of good breaks that Alan Kennedy's made. And the first of them, of course, led to the goal when it was his shot that Parks couldn't hold. Rush. Pike. Oh, given away again to Soonis. That's a dangerous thing to do in that sort of area. And here's Dalgleish. And there are four Liverpool men up. Dalgleish playing it on for McDermott. Back again for Kenny Dalgleish just over the top. Well, a bit of venom there about Liverpool. And uh, that was nearly making West Ham uh, pay for their mistake. They gave the ball away. And Dalgleish with a shot curling, as you can see there, but too high. I would think Bob Paisley now with his tie off. Some forward there. Must be reasonably really happy with the way his team are performing at the moment. Here's McDermott for them now. And Phil Neal, goal kick. I should think not perhaps quite as spectacular at the moment as Joe Mercer, for one, would like to have seen it. But here's Paul Allen for West Ham. Stewart wanting uh, the ball played forward. That was a nice little chip by Allen, incidentally, and West Ham giving the ball away again, though. They've done that several times in the last five or ten minutes. And now McDermott finding Jimmy Case as Liverpool come forward in strength again with David Johnson on the far side, turning it in there, and Alan Hansen was right in there almost to provide the finishing touch. Another example there of men from the back getting forward quickly for Liverpool. Kennedy now chipping it in there. Hansen's header, Ray Kennedy and Billy Bonds with a chance to thread his way clear. Finds Brooking and now Pike. Free kick. Liverpool perhaps a little unfortunate. Former West Ham manager, Ron Greenwood there, enjoying a bit of the sunshine and none of the pressure at the moment for Ron. The England manager, of course. And now Pike. Here's Brush. West Ham getting some back men forward now. Paul Allen with the shot. The last couple of minutes of the first half now. And Liverpool looking to increase that one goal lead given them by Terry McDermott after 17 minutes. Case to McDermott. Soonis, Neil, Dalgleish, Bonds right there with him again. Sliding it out here for McDermott to hit a curler there towards Ray Kennedy at the far side. Neil with the shot, goal kick. West Ham, apart from that one moment when uh, Jeff Pike pulled the ball back from the byline and Liverpool had a bit of trouble getting it away. It's the only time West Ham have ever looked in a scoring position in this first half. First half dominated by Liverpool's calm, professional play. It hasn't been spectacular, but Liverpool already looking pretty awesome in the way they've set about this task here at Wembley today. And Phil Parks 
It was a difficult shot, certainly, coming quickly at him from Alan Kennedy, but he lost it for that moment, and Terry McDermott, number 10, was there to rifle it in from no range at all to put Liverpool in the lead after 17 minutes. So, as the managers go off, there's John Lyle on the left leading the West Ham charge there, with a fair bit of talking to do. I'm wondering whether Trevor Brooking can turn it, of course, for West Ham in the second half. We'll be back with a second half, and that comes up after this short break. Welcome back to Wembley, then, at the start of the second half of this FA Charity Shield. Liverpool leading by one goal to nil, scored by Terry McDermott after 17 minutes. Just waiting for referee John Hunting to get the second half underway. His last engagement, incidentally, in the summer was a World Cup match in Nigeria against Tunisia. Well, it's West Ham now, attacking the goal to our right and needing somehow to unlock the handcuffs that Liverpool have put on them in the first half. The first half dominated by the calm, professional approach of Liverpool and West Ham really hardly in it. Ray Kennedy playing it back to Ray Clements. And now Neil. Liverpool, who start the season in earnest in the league next week at home to Crystal Palace. West Ham at home to Luton. Here's Sunis. For Liverpool, for Kenny Dalglish. Turned back there as McDermott was arriving just a little too late as it happens. But a throw for Liverpool again. Well, I should think Bob Paisley had less to say to his men than John Lyle must have had to say to his. Was a, a good try actually by Jimmy Case because uh, he noticed that Phil Parks was a good six or seven yards out of his goal and tried to hit it above him. Soonest to McDermott. Johnson. Dalgleish is available in there now, Dalgleish looking to get it onto the left foot and wide of the mark. For a moment he had a yard or a yard and a half of pace or space. And everybody held their breath. But his guided shot, as you can see, was well wide of the target. Played in this time for cross. Kennedy, oh, this will let Hansen in. Dalgleish is up there with him. And McDermott is right in there as well, but Bonds again to the rescue of West Ham, and he almost got him back into trouble there until he gave away the corner. But a great breakthrough again by Terry McDermott. And a corner again for Liverpool. Who continue to have the better of things, but still lead by this solitary goal. Alan Kennedy, it's got to be Phil Parks. Again, they thought it was going out, and that's the second time in this game when the West Ham defence have assumed the ball was going out of play, and my word, they were very nearly punished for it then. That could so easily have been the second goal for them. As the throw is taken for Liverpool, we just have time quickly to look at this one again. And Phil Parks plunging at the feet there, and Brush eventually getting it away. But against a team like Liverpool, you do get punished for assuming things like that. Kennedy's shot, well wide, goal kick. Holland. Bonds. Ray Kennedy to Graham Sunis. Swept wide here again towards Jimmy Case. Phil Neal getting it away. Devonshire might have let McDermott in. They thought about a penalty there, but the referee didn't want to know, and in the end, David Johnson hits it way over the top. But as McDermott went scorching into that West Ham penalty area, the cries went up for a penalty. But the referee said no.
Allen. McDermott. Case. Taking it nicely in his stride. The cross coming in. And Ray Stewart getting it away. Ray Kennedy now to Kenny Dalglish. This looks dangerous. Oh, Liverpool really playing with West Ham. And it just goes wide by Ray Kennedy. Oh, but what a brilliant piece of football. With Liverpool combining superbly with great simplicity. And leaving West Ham absolutely in their wake. Jimmy Case with the cross there. Nodded out there in the first place by Stewart. And just look at this combination here until Ray Kennedy puts it wide. It's with Stewart. Brooking, but not aware behind him that David Johnson was coming in fast. And here's Alan Hansen for Liverpool. They're picking up the pace a little bit now, Liverpool, as Johnson takes it up and finds Delgleish. Played in again first time, simply but accurately here for Alan Hansen. Going all the way, Hansen, and then plays it wide there for McDermott to hit another one that's wide of the goal. But again, Liverpool coming along and carving great swathe through the West Ham defence. But at the moment, their finishing touch is deserting them. Sirinus. And now Neil. Case. Played in for Dalglish. Over there, how quickly Stewart closed in on Dalglish. You just don't know to have him uh, let him turn. But now a break by Paul Allen. Holland. Inside for Brooking, and West Ham have got a few up now. And on the far side is Alan Devonshire coming in there with a header across there. Clemens really stretched, cross with the overhead. The best break of the match for West Ham without any question at all. With uh, Paul Allen in the first place having uh, made a lot of the running, Brooking with the deep cross having looked up and spotted Alan Devonshire on the far side. Devonshire a good header in there. Clements really stretching and crossed with the overhead that was wide. Hansen going past the challenge of cross. Good snaking run and a simple little pass in the end to Neil. Now the searching one to McDermott, catches him on the back of the heel, a little lucky there, it comes to Case. Goal kick. forward a little bit West Ham but there's still 25 minutes to go and although they've been dominated by Liverpool you still have to say all the time it's only 1-0 you've still got something of a chance but here's Kennedy now maybe it'll be 2-0 across the face of that goal and then pushed behind by Paul Rush for a corner to Liverpool So Liverpool's corner, Case with it, Brookings header, it'll come for McDermott, but Allen had closed him down a little too quickly, here's Case again, almost in that corner position once more, and that time Martin got it away, here's David Johnson for Liverpool, played inside again for Ray Kennedy, the lazy left foot shot way over that uh, crossbar, goal kick. Johnson. Playing it in here for Kennedy. Back again for Johnson. Looking to see what's available, and it's Phil Neal on the far side. Cut out, though, by Devonshire. Now, this could be a good break for West Ham if they get that up quickly enough. Cross is up there. 
Number nine, there's Cross, but again, they've given it away. Allen again. Really battling away there against Ray Kennedy. Now Stewart. Pike. Pike again, and a chance for West Ham to make some ground down this right flank now. Holland. Now Brooking. Well, he scored here in the cup final. He scored for England at Hampden Park. He scored for England in uh, Naples against Spain in the European Championship. He likes to get goals on the big occasion. And I thought for a moment that it was going to fall for it nicely there as Holland worms his way into that situation, plays it nicely there for Brooking, lets it run so well. Look, the gap was there, but I think there was just that little bit of a bobble as he was about to hit it. Holland, cut out by Thompson, and now Brooking. Played there nicely for Devonshire. Oh, and Clements was there in the nick of time, and West Ham were almost in. Lovely ball by Brooking, and a great run by Devonshire. And uh, a brave piece of keeping as it happens from Ray Clements as well. Played in there almost casually by Trevor Brooking, and Devonshire couldn't quite get there in time. Jeff Pike trots off, and Nicky Morgan, a young striker, comes on. Soonest. Ray Kennedy. It was Paul Allen who got that header away. Soonest, though, challenged there by Nicky Morgan. McDermott finding case. Now Phil Neal. Now Terry McDermott. And Kennedy's pass. Not quite enough weight on it. And here's Brooking taking that pass from Bonds. And here's Morgan on side. Kennedy getting back very quickly indeed, though. Brooking. Oh, what a lovely ball there played for Cross. A great save there, but the ball is uh, not behind. The flag was up for an offside, in any case, against David Cross. But you can't deny that was, again, an acrobatic piece of keeping by Ray Clements. And what a pass here by Brooking. Almost without looking, he knew and sensed that Cross was there. Cross hit it first time. Good reaction save there, punching it up in the air by Clements. But by now, the linesman's flag was up for offside. Stewart. Holland. Rush. Morgan, nice little touch there, finding Brooking. And what lovely skills by Brooking. That was beautiful. Finding Holland. And Morgan fractionally offside as Clemens comes out again, but they are making a few breaks now, West Ham. That was a real hairline decision there. The linesman directly in line, though, no argument with that. Hansen. Johnson. Oh, a lovely ball there by Johnson, and Hansen had continued his run so well. Here's Dalgleish looking to get it on the turn, but reluctantly seems to have a shot. But David Johnson, goal kick. Played there for Stewart. Is this the telling counter thrust now by West Ham? Oh, Brooking has gone past uh, Kennedy. That's a lovely cross by him. David Cross on the far side. West Ham complained that uh, Cross was unfairly dealt with there, but the referee spread his arms wide. That's a West Ham throw. Well, West Ham were looking for a penalty, but John Hunting didn't even give it a second thought. Morgan again for West Ham. 
Devonshire played in for Stewart. Lobbed in there towards Paul Allen and Ray Clements dummies them all and lets the ball go across for the goal kick. Well, they've resisted any temptation to bring on substitutes. Bob Paisley as he puts his tie back on. Into time, added on for stoppages. Incidentally, the trainer, neither trainer's been on the field at all in this game. And it looks as though Liverpool are going to mark the start of a new season with a victory at Wembley. As the final whistle goes, Terry McDermott's goal brings victory for Liverpool, a smile and a handshake from their manager. And the season hasn't exactly got off with a bang after today's performance in difficult conditions, in great humidity there. But certainly the power and the professionalism of Liverpool is there for all to see. West Ham certainly felt it. And I suppose the consolation that West Ham get out of this is that they played well enough to feel that nobody is really going to rip them apart this season. To the side that battled away, particularly in the second half, and looked for one or two breaks that might just pull the game back level their way. Ray Clements, who had so little to do. And so Liverpool, just as they did last year, will go up to pick up the charity shield. The start of a long, hard season for both clubs as Liverpool seek to win the Football League Championship again. And West Ham, this has been a marvellous pipe opener for them. They'd be the first to say that. But their main priority, of course, has got to be promotion to the first division as Bob Paisley goes around shaking hands with friend and foe alike and I should think a warm handshake there for Billy Bonds because I think he's put on the sort of performance that Bob Paisley would appreciate today full of guts and fire and so much running and enthusiasm in it too so Liverpool go up the steps to collect the charity shield and that's not the easiest of climbs after 90 hard minutes in the humidity and sunshine but there's a happy smile from Phil Thompson, his chairman John Smith there, and from Joe Mercer, a great Evertonian. The charity shield goes to Liverpool. So Liverpool are back on the warpath. 